that's why. Okay. Mm, macam ada buka lah tadi kita. Okay. So this RPGT. Right. Uh, 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 this is the book used for uh, 2020, right? So for your exam also, we'll be tested based on this uh, YA 2020. Okay. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do today is that I will just give a summary of RPGT. Right, hopefully that uh, this topic will help you. Okay. So real property gains tax is under in uh, RPGT Act 1976. Yeah. Um, the law is RPGT Act 1976. Income tax Act is 1967. RPGT Act is 1976. Right. So the law is actually on. Uh, Tax on real property. Of course, you have to look at what is the definition of real property. Yeah. And then who is actually being taxed on RPGT is actually the disposer. So if you own a property and then you dispose of the property, then that will be subject to RPGT. Right. But you are going to be taxed on the disposal only if you have gains on the disposal. So how do you know you have a gain on this disposal that you have to look at your disposal price and your acquisition price? Yeah, so then you have to do a computation. What is the computation? What is the disposal price? You less your acquisition price, then we know whether there's a gain or loss on the disposal. If there is a gain on disposal, then you will be subject to RPGT. So in order for you to compute that, Right, you must know what you mean by acquisition price and what is a disposal price. Right, so because you have to do the computation, so the acquisition price is actually the cost of acquisition. Yeah, so this is made up of your purchase price when you first, when you have a property, when you first purchase the property, you must know what is the purchase price. Right, and then in order for you to acquire the property, normally there are also incidental costs. And for example, this incidental cost is your legal fees or your stamp duty or anything that you have to incur in order for you to acquire the, the property. So this is what we call incidental cost, right? Um, you add this together, but then you minus any capital, capital receipts. So what is a capital receipts? Example of capital receipts are your compensation. Yeah, compensation or any and competition money all right anything that you receive or any forfeited deficit all right forfeited deficit so all these are your capital receipts so once you have your cost or purchase price plus your incidental cost minus your capital receipt so that will be your acquisition price and then you have to check what is your disposal price. So disposal price is the price that you, um, the consideration receive, yeah. Uh, so in this case, consideration receive on the property. And then you have to minus your incidental cost in disposing the property, and minus enhancement cost incurred. All right, it means that when you acquire the asset, so during your acquisition period. Right, during your holding period of the property, what are the costs that you incur? In this case, you refer to capital expenditure. Enhancement cost, for example, your renovation, right? So most of the time, you call it a renovation or any other cost that you incur in order to uh, maintain the value, right? Or to enhance the value of the property. Or you can also have cost incurred in order for you to preserve the title of the property. Right, so it's normally for you to, to incur cost in order for you to get the title of the property or, or the strata of the property. Madam. Um, Madam. Yes. May I ask regarding the capital receipts? Yeah. Uh, for the deposit forfeited, uh, in your video you said that deposit deposit forfeited is like a booking fee, but uh, suddenly the buyers uh 
the loan yeah. was rejected by the bank, right? So yeah. that the deposit deposit was forfeited. But I just yeah. curious that uh, why don't the booking fee just be returned to the buyer? You All right, it can... depends. All right, it depends. Uh, based on the contract between the buyer and the seller, right? If they say that the 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 deposit is refundable, then it will not be part of your receipts, lah. So you don't have to minus, lah, your deposit there. Because the deposit is refundable. So you, if the, the loan is uh, not approved by the bank, then you will have to refund the, the booking fees. But if the contract says that the deposit is unrefundable or non-refundable, then whatever deposit received, it will be your capital receipts. All right? Okay. All Does right. that answer? Oh, yes, thank you, man. So you, it will only be your capital receipts if the deposit forfeited is not refunded or the deposit is forfeited lah right but if the deposit is refunded then it will not be your capital receipts okay uh what about disposal price is that clear right the problem is i think that uh, action price most of the students actually uh, do not actually minus your capital receipts what they do is they add everything together so it's strong lah yeah so you have to be very careful with your formula. Why? Because you have to follow the formula because this is the formula based on the RPGTF, right? Uh, you have to follow the formula. You say that the capital receipt is deducted in arriving to equation prime, then you have to follow, right? All right, and then, all right, when you do the acquisition price minus your disp uh, disposal price minus your acquisition price, then you see that, oh, uh, I do have a chargeable gain. So if you have chargeable gain, that means that you have a subject to RPGT. But then before you compute your tax uh, RPGT payable, all right, there are some exemptions given. All right? For example, exemption to individual. Right? If you the disposal is an individual resident, then there is, uh, is it a, do you have to be a resident to have this 10% uh, exemption? Uh, let me compute. On this, oh, remember to talk about your exemption to individual. Again, uh, an individual need not be a Malaysian citizen, yeah, need not be citizen Malaysian in order to enjoy. So, it open as long as you are an individual, right? So, you can get exemption of 10,000 or 10 percent of the chargeable gain, whichever is greater, yeah. Uh, right whichever is greater so given as exemption so the more exemption you receive the better because you have a lower balance to be to be taxed um all right and then the tax rate so once you know your balance of uh, gain which is subject to tax then you have to compare, compare the tax rate so the tax rate depends on the Holding period depends on the individual, whether you are an individual or a company and whether you are a Malaysian citizen or permanent resident, yeah, uh, or permanent resident, right? So if you are citizen, Malaysian, Malaysian citizen, or you are permanent resident, then the tax rate is lower. But if you are non-citizen non or non-PR, then the tax rate is higher, right? And then uh, holding period, the longer you have, the, long, uh, the lower is the tax rate. An uh, individual and company, uh, if six year onwards, individual is five percent, but company is ten percent. Yeah, so all these, uh, uh, you have to. Okay, remember your final exam is an open book, right? So you don't have to. You must know where to look for uh, the information. Yeah. Okay, and then allowable loss. Uh, then, all right, uh, if you have a chargeable gain, of course, you'll be taxed on that. You have to compute the tax rate, everything. But if you have allowable loss, and this allowable loss is effective from 1st January 2010. So when you have losses, all right, means that you don't have to be taxed on the disposal because you have loss. But this loss can be carried forward to set off against your future chargeable gain. Yeah, set off in the subsequent chargeable gain right uh, on disposal so uh, you're talking about rpgt right it's not based on year of assessment it's based on the it is based on the 
under disposal all right so it means that in one year all right for example in one year 2020 i can dispose in january i can dispose another property in march oh banyaknya i don't have so much property yeah but it's not easy actually to dispose of property yeah it takes one year for example the process of the disposal so it could be the disposal fall in january and another proposal in, uh, in june right so you can have all this within year of assessment right so in rpgt you don't actually use year of assessment because you just use year of disposal right so uh, whenever there's a loss you can always use the losses to be set up against your next uh, disposal yeah uh capital gain uh apa ni? uh exemption all right when you want to compute your allowable loss all right if you have a chargeable gain all right you minus uh, exemption and then uh then only you minus your allowable loss right so exemption for individual and then only you minus your allowable loss so make use of the exemption as much as you can uh but if the law prior to 1st january 2010 we don't have any allowable loss but we do have a loss relief right so loss relief is actually uh whatever if you have losses during the year on the disposal you have to times by the tax rate or based on the holding period right um uh, it seems that Um, what did I say? Yeah? Mm, loss, yeah? Okay. Uh, the current loss times by the RPGT rate. Yeah? Right? Okay, go. Right? RPGT rate. So that, that's how you get your loss relief. Right? And this loss relief is used to be set off against your RPGT payable. Yeah, so loss relief, you have RPGT payable minus your loss. Loss relief. So if you look in the textbook, they give you a comprehensive uh, example where it shows you that, okay, so in the case of an individual, so this one is an individual, you have a chargeable gain that you minus your exemption, which is 10% or 10,000, whichever is higher than only you minus your allowable loss. And if you have RPGT relief, oh sorry, if you have loss relief, the loss relief is deducted against your RPGT payable. I think there's another uh, example here, yeah, here, yeah. Chargeable gain minus allowable loss, right? If an individual, you have exemption, right? And then your loss relief is against your RPGT payable. So in a question, for example, here, all right, they give you a scenario and then uh, they give you RPGT losses relief. They are brought forward from 2007. So once you have this loss relief given, then you compute your RPGT pay, RPGT, right? Chargeable gain minus your exemption, and then your RPGT rate, and then then you minus your RPGT loss relief. So that's how you make use of the loss relief in your computation, All right? In an example, you can have allowable loss and loss relief. Yeah, so allowable loss maybe in from 2012, but loss relief from 2007. So you have both. So in that case, you put in in your computation, right? All right, talking about date of acquisition. So why is it so important for you to know the date of acquisition? Because uh, in order for you to determine how long is your holding period, then you have to check what is the date of acquisition. So the date of acquisition depends. There are two ways of doing it. Whether there's a written agreement or there's no written agreement. If there is a written agreement, then you just based on that written agreement, all right, what is the acquisition date? What is it? Uh, hold on, yeah. Um, I think it's here. Right, so written agreement means that there's a sales and purchase purchase agreement. So when there's a written agreement, then you just take the date on the written agreement as your uh, acquisition date, right? And then because you must know what is your acquisition date to your disposal date, so you know you know how long is the holding period that determine what is your tax rate. But if there is no written agreement, then you have to look at which one is the earlier. Right, which one is the earlier? Whether is it a, a transferred 
the asset is transferred or the date where you have received whole amount right receive the whole amount so whichever is earlier that will be your acquisition date so the earlier is the date the better because you will have a longer holding period all right for example if you have transferred the property for example yeah in uh, 2000 for example 2018 but it only take you one year to have received the full amount, for example, right? So in this case, we take the earlier, lah, your holding period will be 2018, right? So the long, the earlier you have the acquisition date, the longer is your holding period, the lower is your tax rate. Yeah? Uh, hold on, yeah. All right, uh, so that is on the date of acquisition. Um, all right, and then, okay, now we go into, uh, so this is what we have, for example, all this. Okay, maybe I have to put in uh, one more where we talk about uh, date of acquisition. Right, uh, if you are written, sales and purchase agreement. All right, but if no written, then earlier of one is the transfer. Or another one is the full payment. Okay. Right. Uh, if it's written, you must base on the SMP date. If no return, then the earlier or your transfer or your full payment. Okay. All right. Uh, and you also had a conditional contract where we look at your depends. Ah. All right. The conditional contract, what it says on the contract, then you have to fulfill ah, what is uh, the conditions. Once the condition is fulfilled, then that will be the date of transfer. Uh, Okay, uh, what else? Uh, okay, now we have the, the second uh, part of the of the topic is on the special circumstances. Yeah, so when you have special circumstances here, uh, there are uh, given uh, special circumstances, then the, the, the rules change a bit, right? Um, so the first one is that when you have a disposal or gift, right? Disposal in the form of gift. So when you say it's a gift, it means that uh, when you give your property to another person, right? And uh, this another person, so when you give the property as a gift, right? The other person don't have to pay anything to you. So there's no disposal price, right? But whenever you, there's a gift and there's a disposal of your property, you have to come to your RPGT. So if it's a gift, right, you don't have disposal price, to the disposal, even though you don't have, you don't receive anything, right, as a, a consideration, right, the disposal price is deemed to be at market value, right, we call it as a deemed disposal price equals to the market value at the date of transfer, right, to the acquirer. So, for example, here you have A and B, A transfer property to B as a gift, right, to A even though you don't receive anything because it's a, it's a transfer of gift, right, your efficient price is deemed to be the market value. To the disposal, right, the, to the disposal, disposal price is deemed the market value. To the acquirer, is deemed that I acquire the asset at the market value as well. Why is it so important? Because even though to the acquirer, 
or to the disposer. When you dispose, even though you don't receive anything, but you have to take the market value as your deemed disposal price and compute whether there's a gain or loss to the disposal. To the acquirer, now I receive the deed, the property, I don't have to pay anything, right? But if I want to dispose the asset, the property later, I must know what is my acquisition price today. So my AP will be the market value on the date of transfer as well. So that's what we call the deed acquisition price, yeah? Um, Right. Okay. Uh, that is the disposal under normal circumstances. It has to be at market value. But when there's a disposal in the form of gift, all right, to immediate family, we call it as an intervivos. Yeah, intervivos, where we say that okay, when there's a transfer between spouses, or when there is transfer between parents and child, or grandparents and grandchildren, then all right, to the disposal. Hold on, yeah. Um, to the disposer is a no gain, no loss, right? But there are two scenarios, yeah. To the uh, whenever the acquirer of uh, sorry, the not this disposer, right? Not acquirer, okay. the disposer or the donor is a citizen. Right? To the disposer is a no gain, no loss. Right? But to the acquirer, right, the acquirer is deemed to acquire the property at the efficient price of the transferor plus the permitted expenses incurred by the transferor. So why is permitted expenses or what we call PE is the enhancement cost and any cost incurred in preserving the site strata. All right, let's go back. Okay. So when there's an intervivos, all right, you do have the the donor, right? Uh, because why you call donor? Because uh, you don't have to pay anything because the, the person give you as a donation, not a donation, all right? A disposal, all right? A transfer without having received anything in returns, but it happened that the transfer is between spouses or between parent and child and grandparent. That's why it's intervivos, yeah. So to the disposer, it's a no gain, no loss. But to the acquirer, you must know what is your acquisition price. So the AP is the AP of transfer. So what you have is that AP of transfer, you have to go back to the definition, what is the acquisition price. So this is the acquisition price, right? So to the you must know what is the acquisition price of the transferor plus permitted expenses. So permitted expenses actually come from this enhancement cost and the cost incurred in preserving or uh, preserving the title or the strata of the property right so you make use of these two cost acquisition plus your permanent uh, permitted expenses then you will have the deemed acquisition price of the acquirer right but if the acquirer or if the disposer right not the acquirer the disposer is a non-citizen or a non-permanent resident then the disposer is deemed to at dispose at market value and the acquirer is deemed to acquire the asset or the property at market value, right? So you have to check first whether the disposer is a resident, a citizen or a citizen. If citizen, then you have to apply the first rule. If not, then you apply the second rule, okay? And then, all right, we also have uh, a scenario whereby an individual uh, who is a citizen, right, it has to be citizen, yeah, uh, transfer a property to a company which is controlled by him or by his spouse or by his family or relative, right? So whenever you have an individual transfer property to a controlled company, what do you mean by controlled company? It means that you have, uh, you have, a shares of 50% or more, right? Either by yourself or by your spouse or by your relative, right? So the company is a control company, then to the individual who transfer is a no gain or loss, right? But um, but the, 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 the rules is that, right, you must transfer property where you have fulfilled this, yeah? 
you must be individual transfer property to a family control company all right it's a no gain no loss provided that you must be an, a citizen and consideration at least 70 percent in share so you must have this fulfill yeah number one is that you must be a citizen citizen and then number two you must be at least 75 percent consideration Okay. Yeah, all right. So that is the uh, condition for an individual to have the disposal as no gain or loss. He must be a citizen, and the consideration received must be at least seventy-five percent in the form of shares in the company. So, for example, I say that okay, I have a property I want to transfer to the company which is controlled by in this be by myself, right? So, assuming that the disposal price is one million. Right, I transfer to the company. Company instead of give me money hundred percent, they give me shares, same value seven hundred fifty thousand. Right, so that is seventy percent of the total consideration, or it could be eighty percent. It could be hundred percent in the form of shares. So if you have this, then the disposal will be no gain or loss. But if the, if the consideration is only less than seventy percent, then it does not fall into no gain or loss. Then the individual will be taxed on the property not on the disposal of the property all right on top of that all right the the shares all right the transferred shares here is known as a real property shares and to the individual when you receive the shares all right now the shares become real property shares so real property shares is subject to rpgt so upon disposal of these real property shares then is subject to rpgt so you have to compute what would be the ap and the dp of the shares so the shares, all right, when you transfer, when you receive the shares from the company, then what is the acquisition price is not the consideration, all right? The acquisition price of the real property shares is actually the acquisition price of the transfer. It means that you're looking at the property, right? So you transfer the property last time. What is the action price of the transfer plus the PE of transfer minus money payment, right? So this is where you have these right to the individual all right when you receive the shares the shares so acquired will be deemed as a chargeable asset by virtue of para 34 schedule 2 all right so that disposal of shares subject to rpgt so how to determine to action date of the shares all right the shares is deemed to be acquired on the date of the transfer of the property but the acquisition price of the shares will be the acquisition price of the transfer plus permitted expenses minus money payment received by him. All right? So uh, you have to look at uh, the existing shares owned by the individual is uh, not a chargeable asset. Only, only the share that is received because of the transfer, because of the consideration received for the transfer of the property is what we call real property, real property shares. All right? So you have to do a computation not only on the property but also on the disposal of the shares. Yeah. So in this example, we have Zainal uh, transferred uh, estate land to Jasa Holding for a consideration of three hundred thousand shares. Uh, the market value of the estate is three hundred thousand. All right. Immediately prior to the transfer, Zainal already have fifty thousand shares in the company. Right, but now because he transfers shares, he get another three hundred thousand shares. So the three hundred thousand plus the fifty thousand existing shares, now you have three hundred fifty thousand shares in the company. Right, but out of the three hundred fifty thousand shares, only three hundred thousand is the RP shares because this one is the normal shares. Yeah. So when you dispose, only the subject to ability is only the three hundred thousand shares. Huh? So you have to apportion the the shares uh, accordingly.
right? So this is the action price for the uh, shares, right? Action price for the shares is based on action price for the cocoa estate plus permitted expenses minus money payment. So this is the one that I was talking about, right? The action price of transfer plus PE of the transfer minus money payment. Right, uh, and then the disposal of the shares, all right, you have to apportion RP shares again or shares. So when you dispose, for example, here, you have total 350,000 shares, but you only, the, the, the subject RPGT is only the 300,000, and this is the value of the shares disposed. Right, so the out of the 700, only 600,000 is subject to RPGT. Right, minus equation prime, then you have chargeable gain, minus exemption again, because why the disposer is Zaina, who is an individual. So that's why you get exemption of 10% or 10,000, whichever is higher. Right, then you have the RPGT rate because the holding period is less than three years. So RPGT payable is 1.8 on the shares. Right, on the property is a no gain, no loss. Okay. And then uh, we do also have under these uh, special circumstances, we have uh, para 171A, para 171B, para 171C. Right, under this para 171A, B, C, uh, I think that is here, uh, exemption, private residence. Okay, private residence here, right, it's important for you to know that uh, every, uh, in this case, uh, citizen or permanent resident individuals, all right, you're given one-time exemption. So if you have uh, one property, upon disposal of that one property, you can claim for exemption because every individual, citizen or permanent resident, you are given exemption on one property. And this exemption is given once in a lifetime. Right, so you have to choose which property that you want to opt for the disposal or uh, for the exemption. Yeah, so exemption means that even though uh, you have a gain on the disposal, you can go for and uh, apply for exemption. Yeah, when you submit your CKHD 1A, uh, you must be a citizen and then the uh, property must be a residential property and then fit for occupation. And then you have not elected exemption prior to this, right? Not elected, yeah? So, it, because you only given one time, right? So, you have to choose. So, if you have many properties, then you have to decide lah, which property you want to go for exemption. Of course, if you think that one of the property will give you the highest gain, right, means that the, the price increase, the disposal price is very high as compared to the acquisition price, then, right, you will have, uh, you may want to opt for exemption on that property. So, you don't have to pay tax on the big chargeable gain on that property. Okay. Uh, and then, we have this exemption for company. We have para 17, 1A, B, and C. So, this one I listed here, right? So, under these three conditions, all right, you'll get exemption. So, it means that there's no gain, no loss. But the condition is that one is para 71A is here, right? For 1A where we, got, we say that uh, where prior property is disposed between companies, right? Between companies in the same group uh, to bring about greater efficiency of operation, the disposal will be treated as no gain, no loss if you have that 70% consideration. Right, so it means that we're talking about transfer of property from one company to another within the same group and the consideration is in the form of shares, right? Consists of shares, so at least 70%, so then the transfer is known as a no gain, no loss. Right, 71B say that transfer in between company scheme of reorganization. So if you transfer because of this purpose, again, the transfer is a no gain, no loss. And finally, uh, you have... Uh, liquidator uh, company uh, transfer the shares because of liquidation of the company under the same scheme of reorganization, reconstruction and amalgamation. Yeah. So again, that is exempted. Right. To the transferring company, you have to look at the transferer is a no gain, no loss. Okay. 
uh, it can be also be withdrawn if they say that or under para 17 if they say that okay they find that the transfer is not for the purpose under 17 one a b or c then they will withdraw the no gain no loss so you have to be taxed on the disposal yeah and finally all right you do have these uh, circumstances where the a deceased person right for example if a person passed away and have a real property so to the deceased person also when he passed away the property will be transferred to the beneficiaries right and the para aid or in the, any other will so if it's transferred to the deceased person is a no gain or loss so the citizen don't have to pay any RPGP. but to the one who received the property all right you must know what is the acquisition price of the property so the AP would be at the market value at the date of transfer, right? So you know that legacy is actually the beneficiaries, right? Who receive property under a will, then the acquisition price is due at market value. So normally, all right, if you say that the acquisition price uh, based on what you acquired and the market value, market value normally is higher. Is it good for you to have a market value? It's good because if your acquisition price is higher, right? So your disposal price compared to your acquisition price, then you have a smaller, uh, smaller chargeable gain, right? Because your DP minus your AP, which is the market value, then you have a smaller chargeable gain. So you have only have to pay lower RPGP, right? Um, but then if you legacy like receive property in your of money legacy, right? Instead of you receive money, you receive property, then you the acquisition price of the property will be the lower of market value of the money legacy, right? So what it means is that, okay, uh, you uh, we are talking about distribution of wealth. Uh, if a person passed away, right, they have a property, right? So instead of you receive cash, right, you don't receive money, but you receive a property in lieu of money. So you must know what will be the acquisition price of the property. So the acquisition price of the property will be the lower of the market value or if you don't receive the property, how much is the money that you receive? Right, so you have to look at the lower of. AP is the lower of, right? Lower of your market value or money legacy. But if you also have other uh, compensation received on the property, then that will also be reduced, right? So your IP will be lower. So more likely you have to pay more tax, right? And finally, you have the executor to third party, right? So in this case, if you execute a disposed real, real property to third party, and the para 19.3, our executor will be G to have acquired the real property at market value. Right, at the date of death, and then if you transfer, then the uh, not available, all right. Uh, so executive is deemed to acquire the property at market value, right? So the action price will be the market value, which is normally is higher, so it's good because more likely executor will have to pay less tax, yeah. And remember that the executor is not an individual, so that's for there's no exemption, right, on the disposal by the executor right uh, in this case we're talking about executor transfer and you have to sell the property to third party okay and finally uh we have the what you call the administration part right administration when it comes to your real property gains tax all right the to the what are the responsibility of responsibilities of the disposal and then you also have responsibility of the common C common D right of the expiry right here the disposal right so of course you have to submit you have to submit form uh to rb and uh, see under rbm yeah so what form you have to submit i think c a h t one okay, any 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 uh, why c k h t one anyone c k h t mechanism of collection c k h t one a the disposal 
right? Disposal is submit CKHT 1A and the acquirer will have to submit CKHT 2, right? Within 60 days from the date of disposal. It's 11 o'clock. Right, it can be filled electronically. So CKHT 1A, right? And then uh, did this acquirer comment C, comment V, uh, CKHT 2. Why CKHT? To buy hasil tanah. Right? To buy hasil tanah. Alright, so within 60 days of, of what? Date of disposal? Date of disposal. Okay. All right. And then uh, not only that, all right, the acquirer are required why, why the acquirer? Because the acquirer is the one who has the money now, right? So before you make payment, all right, everything to the disposer. So remember that you have disposer and acquirer. Acquirer is the one who purchased the property. So acquirer is the one who has to pay to the disposer the consideration of the property. So the law requires that in order for you to collect tax, the RTT, what we do is that we say that acquirer, you have to pay 10%, right? Uh, uh, what we call retention money. All right, respective of acquirer, RTT info, the acquirer is written 3%. Of the value, right? So, can ten yeah? It's only three percent. Three percent. We call it as what? Uh, we pay. Pay three percent of consideration of disposal price yeah? to RRB. So what happened is that this um, the three percent is to be paid by the acquirer of the disposal price. So let's say lah, all right, uh, you have a uh, disposal price is uh, one million, all right? So three percent of the one million is thirty thousand, yeah. So you have to pay RB thirty thousand, all right, and the balance ninety seven percent you pay to your disposal, right? So what happened is that uh, RFB has collected 3% and then based on the CKHT1 and CKHT2 submitted by the acquirer and the disposer, RB, okay, so, uh, RB will do the computation on the RPGT, right? All right, balance of uh, RPGT payable to be refunded or claimed. From okay, so let's say now, okay, remember that acquirer has paid 30,000 to RBM, right? But the law requires the RB to require, okay. So what so they will do the computation, what is the RPGT based on the action price, based on the information provided, action price, disposal price, everything. So what they do is that okay, now they come up with the RPGT payable. So assuming the RPGT payable is only 20,000. All right, just now uh, the acquirer has paid 30,000 to RBM, but the actual RPGT is only 20,000. So the balance 20 and 30, the 10,000 will be refunded by RBM to the disposal because the money actually belongs to the disposal, all right? But if I say that the actual RPGT is 40,000, then the balance, the 10,000 will be collected from the disposal, right? But at least RB has collected 30,000 upfront, right? So if there is any extra, all right, they will refund to the disposal, but if it's not enough, they will collect additional from the disposal, all right? So that is the uh, mechanism, right? Uh, maybe I put it here. Okay. 
mecanizante. This is um, okay. So that covers all partner. Right, uh, this is for the foreigner. You have to notice of assessment issued by the IB that will tell you how much is the actual, right? Any excess of the amount that by the acquirer will be refunded to the disposal. Penalty on non submission is 300%. Yeah, it's a lot, right? You're talking about RPGT, even though uh, the amount is not, but the penalty is 300% on the RPGT payable. So, assuming that you have to pay RPGT 30,000. Right, you times by 300%. So that would be the penalty. Yeah, or you can be fined in prison and both. Um, and then your uh, RB is empowered to impose further uh, penalty yeah, if, they, if they think it's fit. Right, so if the penalty here, for example, uh, penalty is that chargeable gain is need, RBT payable. And then 300% penalty is computed as that. So you have to pay instead of paying only 42,000, but end up because you did not submit, you have to pay 300% the total RPGT that you have to pay to government is 171,000. That gets a lot. All right, late submission, um, non compliance. All right, they have a lot more here. All right, if you fail, all right, they put it in less than 12 months, penalty is 15 percent Right, uh, and then uh, within two years, 20% and more than 24 months, 25%. That is penalty for non-submission, right, non-compliance. This one is uh, the 20% is penalty for, what's that? 20% uh, penalty for disclosure, fail to disclose, right? Mm, right, liability, right. So that covers your RPGT. Right, so I will share this. I will look into this again. All right, so that looks better. I will share this um, uh, in the Google Classroom. And if it's, you think that it's a beneficial, it's good. Lah. Yeah, uh, all right. Any question? So these are the theoretical part. Of course, you have to do the computation. Okay. It's Alright, so I will stop recording now. I hope that the revision uh, is uh, beneficial. Right? I hope that it helps you to understand the topic better. Uh, help you also for your assessment.